Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. Wait a minute, I tell you. You ain't heard nothing. Hello and welcome to this edition of Recent Reads. I recently read War and Peace by Lynn Tolstoy for the Chunksters Reading Challenge. W. Somerset Maugham said in an interview with Alan Price Jones, everybody agrees that the best novel that has ever been written is War and Peace. He said that Tolstoy's unfortunate wife had to write it out in longhand seven times. He said that she frequently tried to commit suicide, but she didn't succeed, which is only natural in the circumstances. I assume he was joking. How is it possible to review such an iconic novel as War and Peace? All I can say is that I was surprised at how easy it was to read and as a result it was hugely enjoyable. In ten novels and their authors, W. Somerset Maugham wrote, it could only have been written by a man of high intelligence and a powerful imagination. A man with wide experience of the world and a penetrating insight into human nature. No novel with so grand a sweep dealing with so momentous a period of history and with so vast an array of characters was ever written before, nor, I surmise, will ever be written again. The period Tolstoy chose to deal with was that of the Napoleonic Wars and the climax is Napoleon's invasion of Russia, the burning of Moscow and the retreat and destruction of his armies. Interwoven into the narrative, there are approximately 500 characters. Mom states, the interest is not concentrated as in most novels on two or three persons, or even on a single group, but on the members of four families belonging to the aristocracy, the Rostovs, the Volkonskis, the Kuragins, and the Bazukovs. These characters and their relationships are skillfully worked out in times of both war and peace. And as Mom points out, the transitions of events so violently diverse could present the difficulties of plausibility, but in Tolstoy's masterly hands, these transitions and contrasts are successfully handled to create an integrated narrative. There are two main characters whose interests we follow throughout the novel, Natasha Rostova and Pierre Bezukov. Natasha is sweet, sensitive and sympathetic, childish, womanly already, idealistic, quick-tempered, warm-hearted, headstrong, capricious and is in every way enchanting. Pierre is a puzzling character. He is a huge ugly man, so short-sighted that he has to wear spectacles and he's very fat. He eats too much and drinks too much. He's a great womanizer. He's clumsy and tactless, but he's good-natured, so manifestly sincere, so kindly, considerate and unselfish that it is impossible to know him without loving him. So he's also extremely wealthy. There is, is much more to Pierre, but I will leave it to the reader to discover his hidden depths. And Tolstoy wrote, What is War and Peace? It is not a novel. Even less is it a poem and still less an historical chronicle. At times one piece reads like a novel as the characters take centre stage and we become involved in their relationships. At other times it reads like an historical novel as the characters are thrust into the action of the Napoleonic Wars. At other times it reads like an academic history and then again Tolstoy becomes polemical and inserts essays into the text to contradict historians and their theories while propounding theories of his own. After considering this massive book and how I would talk about it and rate it, I concluded that it is a book to be read once, but given the variety of treatments, once it has been read, it is not necessary to read it again, and thus my rating for this work is B. On completion, I donated £12 to Book Aid International. 
Donations to date total £976. Thank you to everyone who has continued to participate in the Chunksters Reading Challenge and to donate to this worthwhile book-related charity. The final books I'm planning to read for this challenge is the trilogy A Horseman Riding By by R.F. Delderfield. B book one is A Long Summer Day. Book two is Post of Honour. Book three is The Green Gauntlet. I also recently read for October 2020 the 10 short stories in A Group of Noble Dames by Thomas Hardy, which I thoroughly enjoyed. There was only one weak story in the collection, but otherwise I thought they were excellent. My rating is A. I also recently read two plays by William Shakespeare. I reread Macbeth. The lesson is don't jump the gun and think that you can outthink fate. I reread Antony and Cleopatra. The lesson is stick to what you have and don't get sidetracked by chasing romantic daydreams. I also read two plays by W. Somerset Mom. The first was The Circle. Mum said that The Circle was the best play he ever wrote. It is certainly hugely entertaining. It is a three-act comedy. Here are a few quotes from the play. Elizabeth, damn! Arnold, good-humouredly. I wish you wouldn't say that, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, if you're not going to say damn when a thing's damnable, when are you going to say damn? Teddy, England's ripping to come back to, but I couldn't live here now. It's like a woman you're desperately in love with as long as you don't see her, but when you're with her, she maddens you so that you can't bear her. It reminds me of what my first wife said to me when she had been away for a few weeks, and when she came back, I said I'd missed her. She said, why can't you miss me when I'm here? Champion Cheney, I love old wine, old friends and old books, but I like young women. Lady Kitty, one sacrifices one's life for love, and then one finds that love doesn't last. The tragedy of love isn't death or separation. One gets over them. The tragedy of love is indifference. The second play I read was The Constant Wife, another comedy in three acts. The Constance is the constant wife of the play. Her husband, John, is having an affair with her best friend, Marie Louise. Several of the other characters in the play are aware of it, and her sister, Martha, is desperate to tell her, but Constance has known all along and has chosen to ignore it. The delicious part of the play is when Mari Louise's husband finds John's cigarette case under his wife's pillow. He bursts into Constance's living room where everyone is assembled and announces to Constance that her husband is having an affair with his wife. She, as cool as a cucumber, says, I see you've brought back my cigarette case. The rest of the action and its consequences follow on from there and it is worth checking out. There is a radio play of The Circle and an Everyman Theatre production of The Constant Wife on YouTube and you can find The Circle on Project Gutenberg and you will find the links in the show notes below. I also read Is He Popinjoy by Anthony Trollope for October 2020. Is He Popinjoy is a story of jealousy, ambition, family feuds and reconciliation which reminded me of some of the themes Trollope explored in he knew he was right. Because it reminded me of this novel, I didn't enjoy it as much as I might have done if I hadn't already read He Knew He Was Right. When I first read the title, I thought it was a term of criticism, but it refers to the title of the eldest son of a Marquis. In other words, is he Lord Popenjoy? The main plot involves the marriage and birth of the Marquis of Brotherton's son in Italy. There appears to be some anomaly regarding the timing of the marriage and birth of the son and heir, thus the title of the book, Is He Popinjoy? The secondary plot involves the marriage of George, the brother of the Marquis of Brotherton, to Mary, the daughter of the Dean of Brotherton. As in He Knew He Was Right, there is a dark character, Jack de Baron, who is in love with Mary and with whom Mary is fascinated, but of course innocent of any wrongdoing but nevertheless causes her husband to be jealous 
by her unthinking though innocent behaviour. The interweaving plots are worked out with all of Trollope's usual skill and finesse. I enjoyed Is He Pop and Joy more than he knew he was right, and although I recommend it, I can only rate it as B. And now, here's a quick recap, and I'll be back soon with another BookTube video. Goodbye.